Welcome to the lecture on um, Chapter 8, Section 3, the Product and Quotient Theorems. Um, this is a trigonometry and specifically polar forms um, provide an easy way to um, do um, products or multiply complex numbers and also divide them. So we're going to look at how to do um, products of complex numbers in trig as well as quotient complex numbers. So this is a really relatively simple idea. It's very important that you understand um, this formula and have it in your notes. The product theorem says if, um, here we have them in um, polar form, if R1 cosine theta 1 plus I sine theta 1 and R2 cosine theta 2 plus I sine theta 2 are any two complex numbers, then the product of those numbers, as you can see them here, R1 CIS theta 1 times R2 CIS theta 2 is equal to the product of their magnitudes, R1, R2, times cosine I sine of the sum of their angles, theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay, so in the short form again here, I think it's easier to memorize the formula. I mean, remember that CIS just stands for cosine plus I sine. So here again, we have um, R1 CIS theta 1, R2 CIS theta 2, and here is the formula that is equal to the product of their magnitudes, R1 times R2 CIS of the um, sum of their angles. So this is a really simple way to do products. Um, it may be a little more complicated if the original problem is given in rectangular form like 4 plus 3i. You're first going to have to convert that into um, polar form. Remember that our, the magnitude is simply the square root of a squared plus b squared or the two yeah, I'm sorry, the x, x and y coordinates, and then also the tangent equals um, of theta equals y over x, so you can do the inverse tangent. But we did that um, in the earlier sections of chapter um, 8. So let's look at an example. Here we have example 1. Find the product of 3 CIS 45 and 2 CIS um, 135 and write the result in rectangular form which of course means that we have it in the form of like a number 3 plus 4i or something not in the CIS polar form okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply the two um, magnitudes 3 and 2 and then we're going to add the angles for the CIS okay so you can see here we get 3 times 2 times the cosine 45 plus 135, I sine 45 plus 135. So this simplifies into 6 CIS 180, but of course the cosine of 180 is negative 1, and the sine of 180 is 0, and so we just get the final answer of negative 6. Okay, so again this is a pretty simple, as long as you know the formula, again, multiply the magnitudes, add to the angles. So now let's look at the quotient theorem. Quotient theorem is very similar. If we're um, dividing two complex numbers, here we have them in polar form, um, it's very similar to the product theorem, except we're, instead of multiplying the magnitudes, we're going to divide them. And instead of adding the angles, we're going to subtract them. So the bottom in yellow is what you want to focus on. Um, again, dividing the magnitudes and subtracting the angles. Let's look at an example here. Why don't you go ahead and hit pause. Hopefully you've put those, um, the formula in your notes. This is 10 CIS negative 60 over 5 CIS 150. Okay. So here again, we divide the magnitudes 10 divided by 5 and we get CIS negative 150, excuse me, negative 60 minus 150. This gives us um, 2 CIS negative 210. Okay, a negative 210 is actually going to be in um, quadrant 2. I'm not sure if you can do this with your calculator, if it'll come out correctly. Um, if those are the right quadrants for 
uh, sine and cosine, I'm not sure. But go ahead and try it in your, cal in your calculator. But notice that negative 210 is the same as um, the, the reference angle 30 in quadrant 2. Since we're in quadrant 2, cosine will be negative because the x value is negative in quadrant 2 and the sine will be positive. Okay. So here they've obviously used um, the known angle of 30 and the triangle 30, 60, 90 as we did earlier in the course. And so we get um, 2 times negative square root of 3 over 2, which is the cosine of 210 or the cosine of, of um, the reference angle 30 in quadrant 2, plus i 1 half, which of course is the sine of um, the reference angle 30 in quadrant 2 or, or the actual angle of 150, okay? And so we get negative square root of 3 plus i. If you put this in your calculator, I imagine you got an actual um, numerical decimal for the square root of 3, okay? So here we have um, a product. We're actually going to do one of each. We're going to do a product and a quotient um, using the calculator. So it's 9.3 CIS 125.2 times 2.7 CIS 49.8. Again, here we're going to multiply the magnitudes and add the angles. As we go through this process, we get 25.11 times CIS 175. So we need to figure out what um, 25.11 times the cosine of 175 is, um, and also that same 25.11 times the sine of 175. And we ultimately get negative 25.0144 plus 2.1885i. All right. Our last problem we're going to do in this section is a quotient. Um, here we are in radians, so make sure your calculator is in radian mode before we should have seen you should have made sure that your calculator was in degree mode. <clears throat> Again, we're going to remember we're going to divide the magnitudes and we're going to subtract the angles. So we're going to have to have a common denominator here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here we get um, a common denominator is 20. So we get 2 cosine 11 pi over 20 plus i sine 11 pi over 20. We can plug this into our calculator and calculate each of those values. 2 cosine 11 pi over 20 is negative 0.3129. Sine 11 pi over 20 is 1.9754, and we get this final answer. So these are just two simple formulas that you need to memorize for the final exam, and um, this is the end of section 8.3.